Get this on the Triple M Network. With, uh, well, myself, Tony Martin. You know, I know when the phone rings at 6.30am that he's watched all of the early morning TVs and read all of the newspapers and uh, I'd better be on top of the uh, the issues. Yes, mm. that's very true. And uh, in the sidecar, of course, we've got Ed Cavalier. Hello. He has the most amazing work effort yes. that I've ever seen. That's right. Um, you know, he, he can work 16, 17 yep. hours a day and then get up and go walking again at 6 a.m. in the morning. Mm. It's very true. And, of course, pushing the buttons, Richard Marsland. Well, he doesn't put the cap on the toothpaste. Hang on. How did he know that? That doesn't deserve applause. That is not clever. OK, thank you, Mr <laughs> Downer. He doesn't like it. Enough out of you. Did you see Peter Costello on the Sunday program on the weekend? No. Oh, it was fantastic. Laurie Oakes tried to grab his ass at one point. Oh, Laurie, come on. <laughs> That's his only reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Save it for off here. Just let him. Welcome aboard. We're on something I'm calling Hume Cam this mm, morning. Yes. Right over my shoulder is Lockie Hume. Don't give him a round yet. Wait till his hour. He hasn't earned okay. it. Okay. He gets a whole hour. Yes. Just say hello, Mr. Camera. Hi, Mr. Camera. <laughs> okay, he's here. Everything we say today is being filmed. I'm not mm. sure if this is a film Lockie's making or it's something the legal department here of required in our final Well, week. there's a writer's strike in America, yeah, so this could be on in prime time. That's right. Okay. <laughs> as long as we we could replace Desperate Housewives. <laughs> Make sure you don't say anything that's been written. I've got better cans than that. What's her name? Terry well, Hatcher. No. Eva Longoria. There it is. Yeah, yeah. I'm assuming that wasn't put together by a team of script writers. <laughs> we should be fine with that. I'll tell you what we can do. Richie's got a touch of the Nicolette Sheridans about him. Sure. <laughs> Thank Look at you. him. Lot I thought of, Felicity Huffman, actually. Nah, a lot of work up in, top. In Transamerica, but yeah, still. maybe. Yes. Look, Lockie will be on uh, microphone in the second hour. I'm feeling very self-conscious at the moment. A real radio announcer is in the room. Please welcome the bear, our original panel operator hello. here again. There's hello, hello, bear. Bear. hello, hello. So great to have you back. Yeah. I mean, I was wondering, you wanted me back in the room. Remember uh, what happened that first yeah. day? I just don't want it to be <laughs> awkward between us, Bear. Yeah. When, how long is it now since Richard White handed you out of your gig, uh, uh, I just I don't want to remember that. Yeah, it was a very like sad day. Dark oh, days. Mm. oh, look, I know. Look, save it for off here, guys. Okay. Keep the feud brewing. <laughs> Maybe we can have a proper smackdown on Friday. That's a good idea. Right. Backing no. out smackdown. What's happened to the Triple M smackdowns, Bear? I mean, you were in charge of that for a while. Yeah, but you guys kept on caning it. Oh, no, we, we didn't. Caning. No, we, we did. We were all for it, Bear. You sure. got you just never you would never put the heavyweights together. Yeah, that's Howard the thing. Jones v Nick Kershaw, <laughs> yeah, man. This is the battles people want to see. You idiot. No. <laughs> Kajagoo v Sig Sig Sputnik. I was waiting for that all year. Spandau Ballet didn't get a look in. <laughs> never happened. Now, where did you start in radio, Mr. Beer? Up in Queensland. Up in Mackay. Oh, like right. central Queensland. Okay. How yeah. is it there? I mean, what sort of notes do you get in central Queensland? Uh, turn the mic on. Yeah, okay. that's good. When you talk. More uh, sugar cane talk. <laughs> Lots of that. <laughs> Lots of rural stuff, you know. Oh, yeah, keep it rural. Yeah, keep it rural. Uh, just normal stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. A little bit, it's a little bit slower. <laughs> well, was it one of those country stations where the music format is kind of broad because you're catering to everyone, so you might yeah. have T-Rex backing up onto Celine Dion? Pretty much. Into mm. pink. Pretty pink. much like exactly what we're doing now. Oh, oh the countdown. It? Yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> but yeah. is it possible to get into trouble uh, in a place like that? Was there any instance where you were hauled over the coal? No, not at all. There wasn't. Yeah. A, they didn't know how to spell air check. Uh, didn't Fantastic. know what it was. <laughs> but it, the, the fun was off the air. That was when the, the, the real fun happened, you know. I, I used to work with a guy uh, who works at Triple M in Brisbane, Greg Wood, little Woody. Oh, okay. Woody, yes. Yeah, yeah. We used to peg things at each other and uh, we used to run the music department up in North Queensland and uh, wow. we used to peg uh, lollies at each other and, and CDs, smashing different things around the place. And that was before we got to work. Wow. It's like it's a real <laughs> family atmosphere up there. See, that is the complete opposite from what Tony Moclear has been telling us about people <laughs> shelving garlic tablets after yeah. hours, that sort of thing. You've it's never just... been involved in any of that, have you, Bear? No. no. Really? No. Okay. Obviously, okay. these flung. CDs will be getting back to somebody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Mr. Beer, you attended, did you not, a professional radio school? Yes. Something nobody in this room has done. What it, goes on there? Uh, they, well, they, they try and coerce you and try and teach you about the do's and don'ts about radio. Yeah. Give us some don'ts, Bear. Uh, <laughs> Give us a few don'ts. And don't just play a tape of our show. All right? <laughs> I was, was going to mention your <laughs> name. You know, don't lie. Well, that was the first thing. Oh, that was there it, we yeah. go. No, oh, just yeah, basic stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Nothing, nothing intricate. Um, 
It obviously didn't work on me. Weird yeah, well. people learn what I call the Gavin Wood skill, which is being able to take any kind of uh, song title or band name and just relate it to your life. Let's just choose. <laughs> just at random, what have we had what got? already? We've had If You Want My Love, If You Want My Love. Well, somebody said that to me last night. I don't want to go into too much detail. <laughs> One of those. Kiss J. Yeah, I was playing a bit of Kiss J. Z. recently. Ah. Don't want to go there. Leave it alone, guys. Right. So Brian Manix picked up on that as well. It's Lee Simon, did it? Yeah. Oh, the 80s guys. Yes. yes. Now, you're not old enough to become an 80s. Guy. How old do you think I am? Well, you're younger than me. I'm yeah. saying, suggesting you might be in your early 30s. I like him. Well, how old are you? Yeah. 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 I'm turning 40 next year. 40 are you next year? Are you yeah, a, are I'm turning you... 40 at 17th of May. Are you a fruitarian, Bear? What, what the, the hell is that? A fruitarian is someone that only eats fruit as it falls off the tree. Because I've never seen anyone look so healthy at no. 40. Living healthy, look flinging CDs well, thank about. Thank you. Great. Fantastic, Fantastic, I appreciate that. Bear. Yeah. And can I say, you know, for our listeners, it's a very uh, visual show, this one. But <laughs> sure. your nickname is The Bear, yes? Yeah, 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 it is. I've never seen anyone look less like a bear in my life. Nobody <laughs> looks less bear-like than a bear. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> everyone <laughs> expects his big, fat, hairy, Rocked. you know, yeah. meatloaf. Pic- chasing picnic baskets. Exactly. In a waste. Coat. Yeah. That's what I expect. I was like the bear. <laughs> <laughs> Keep my picnics to myself. That guy's on the prowl. <laughs> Better warn the ranger. Yeah. Well, we'd like to uh, thank you for your contribution to get thank this you, beer, Mr. Bear. being one of our great supporters here at the I station. love it. Love the show. Thanks, guys. All our right. Pleasure. Uh, what have you done to Mr. Bear, Ed? Well, it's funny. <laughs> yeah, he's so good. You know, he's a radio professional. Yeah. And, uh, no. I believe there's an, a song coming up there. Who are we going to hear from? Ricky Marsland. Mm. Yep. <laughs> What's he got for us? Cover me in lotion and throw me at row. That's a nice little <laughs> track. <laughs> can't be. It's not what we've got. We've got oh, this right. one here. We've got, what would the Triple M's Essential 2007 countdown is rolling through. We're getting to the pointy end of the season. Van Halen would have to be at the top there. Is this sounding professional enough for you? It sounds great. <laughs> I don't know what number it is. Van Halen, why can't this be loved? Tony Martin's Get This. Triple M. Thank you. Yeah. Very good on you. Yesterday really we tight. didn't go out in Brisbane, I'm not sure. I said some pretty full-on stuff about the Story Bridge early on. <laughs> Very poor. Well, it was my own fault, and I'm yeah, sorry. You've been bagging Fortitude Valley for years. Yeah, the the ba- Malcolm Sue years are behind us. Leave it alone, <laughs> Kevily. just can't. It's not the Moonlight State anymore. <laughs> We've all moved on. No, mm. somebody forgot to plug something in. I think that's what happened. Yeah. Someone kicked it out of the wall. The yeah. squeeze box, I heard. Yeah, I, was, I heard the squeeze box. <laughs> squeeze box. The, squeeze the, box. The what is it? Is it one guy with a monkey beside him the, to, to play our show in Monday, cranking a box? That's right. The entire <laughs> network is wired up to a piano accordion. Okay. Anyway, hopefully we're going out in Brisbane today. Hello, Brisbane listeners. Um, Hello to everyone at St. Finn Bars Primary, where oh, I went to school. Yeah, hey, get on the monkey bars. Perfect height. <laughs> the monkey bars? Two tall for the year sixes to come and play because their feet hit the ground, yep. yeah. but just tall enough so when you're in grade three, you felt like a king because you were up there. Yeah, yeah, it's all the talk. Did your mum ever have to come and pick you up after a monkey bar accident? No. Tony, mm. I made my own lunch mm. from grade two. Yeah. Uh, Is this why you didn't want her on the show? A lot of people called up at the end of yesterday's show and said surely the ending was going to be Mrs. Cavalier comes on yeah. and says at least one word. You wouldn't even let her in the door. No. Nah. What was that really about? No, surely. Just, you know... Just she's, a hello would have She's been. a lovely woman. So what would she have said if I'd said to her, oh, Mrs. Cavalier, hello, yeah. what would she have said that would have caused so much trouble? Do you want to buy some ice? <laughs> <laughs> what a family. Let's turn the spotlight on to Richard Marsland. Yeah, uh, he's been head down on the internet mm. uh, for once visiting sites that aren't blocked here at the station. <laughs> That's right. What have you found? Petitionspot.com. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're heading for 10,000 signatures? We might just get in under the wire, possibly. Ooh, okay. We're pretty close to <laughs> it. Yeah, wouldn't that be sad? Um, 10,000 would be nice by Friday. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> tent. Anyway, keep going. We're around 8,600. Which eight, is great. Eight, 700. Yeah, what are they saying? Um, our thanks to all the people who've signed up. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Tenderise Ville Gardens, Mr. A. Scallop. <laughs> Muzzle the chicken man, F. Elchstraw. Uh, Poon advisor, John Flangeberger, delivery man, one. And Shaz Mullins as well, who writes, I wake in the night, alone in another country, far from home. It's dark. The Belgian in the hostel bunk above me is snoring. Mm. I have a 5 a.m. flight in three hours. I'm alone. I'm depressed. I'm tired. I need my friends. I need someone I know. Mm. Someone I love. Friends that fit snugly in the confines of my MP3 player with voices like angels to carry me off to sleep and into their strange Marsland-tainted world. Oh, I Uh, thought it was Hamish and Andy up till then. (laughs) Fine. Fair enough. Thank you so much for the joy and entertainment you guys have brought me on crowded trains in Turkey in a frozen lake in Finland and on budget planes to anywhere. Every podcast download made my week. Viva la get this. (laughs) 
going international indeed. That's and fantastic. Sizzler Restaurants Australia, some sort of non-delicious filler talk. <laughs> okay. There we go. What are they On saying board. about you, uh, Richard? Is there any... Um... Yeah, it's, it's, it's all my fault, according yeah. to petitionspot.com. Oh, you want to know about how Richard lives his life? Yeah, my... what have you got for us there? Yeah. Uh, let's have a quick look here. Clam Chowder writes in uh, and says, I imagine Richard's home to be much like the cave in Rambo First Blood. <laughs> Richard sits next to the fire, light reflecting off his lotion-drenched skin. He listens to the Venga Boys blaring through the walkie-talkie, but when not listening, he is tormented by thoughts of upskirting in the Veal Gardens. Confused by the world, he calms himself down by saying, I'm Richard. Listen, Tom, we want to get all of our favourite phone topics out of the way before we sign off. Yeah, what was one of our favourites? Well, I wanted to do which animal do you steal from the zoo today until, Tone, something prompted me to do my other favourite, where have you slept? Where have you slept? What's happened? <laughs> Bloke asleep in a shopping trolley in my street. Wow. Yeah, there he was. Now, you know that the ladies of the night work from outside my front door. They certainly do. And hello to them all who <laughs> yes. are there at the moment. Don't touch me stuff. <laughs> uh, there's a little nature strip at the end of my road. Yeah. And there was a bloke. I came around the corner on my bike this morning and all I saw was legs. And he was sleeping in a shopping trolley with his head up the shallow end and his legs... <laughs> Hanging down the back was what he'd done is he'd picked up the little kitty seat to give himself more leg room. <laughs> Fast asleep. And, it, you know, if you've got <laughs> wow. a shopping trolley, does that qualify you as a curb crawler? No. Was he picking up in this trolley? We got the first home buyer's grant, but he, <laughs> <laughs> that's all he could afford. All right. Is that, I mean, can you top that? Where have you, now you're from a family like mine, so I'm assuming you've spent a lot of, uh, you know, evenings as a yeah, youngster I don't. under bushes. Okay. Maybe with a local priest. Yes. Maybe with the salvage. For a oh while. my goodness! I lived with some friends of ours called the Browns yeah. for about three months, and no one could tell me why. I had the same thing. <laughs> Did you? I had six months with the Salvos. I had uh, a couple of weeks with some family I didn't know. I, they tried to tell me we were related <laughs> to, and they were just taking off their hands while they had to fight in the courts for a couple of months. <laughs> I was forever getting shipped off. It's like, who's this dude with the beard? He's not my uncle. He's in none of my early birthday shots. I actually ran away and claimed that I'd been sleeping with the Salvos, and I was fine. I've been staying with the Salvos. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, I've been. Sleeping in one of those Salvos bins. <laughs> Cole Sanderland style, just for one night. Oh, I man. I once slept in a frangipani tree. <laughs> so tropical. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, there's a lot to talk about there. Mr. Marsden, where have you slept? Okay, when I was working in community radio, oh, had yeah. a very late night, mm -hmm. and I had to uh, do a show in on Sunday morning, yeah. uh, paneling a Czech spoken show. A, oh, good. A, a show mm -hmm. in Czech yeah. for other people. Are you brushing up on those skills again, Rich? <laughs> Can I ask at this point? I'm still trying to master English, clearly, <laughs> from this story. And But before that, I had to um, I had to run a, a tape, like Sunday morning prayer mm -hmm. time tape, because mm -hmm. I had some religious programming. Um, so I'd set the tape off, and it was like a 40-minute tape. Um, but I wanted a little nap because I was tired. Yeah. So I thought I'd have a nap underneath the panel. Brilliant. Call a wake-up call into the station. That'll be fine. No one's Sweet. here. No one's going to notice. It's Checks and on the wiser. Morning. morning, Pavel. Missed the wake-up call. Uh, there was about 20 minutes of just a tone. Woo! <laughs> On community radio. Tested through the roof. The tape identification at the start. <laughs> that is killing. They're still running that. They replay it every year. Had the call from the station manager. Uh, do you want to wake up? Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay. It's that kind of skill that's seen Richard Mars and Sack. Now, is this your fourth time from the network? Have you been sacked four times? Uh, this will be my second. Oh, no, sorry. Third time. Third yeah. time. This is my third time. You counting the sex show? Yeah, no, counting the sex uh, show. All right. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> what I heard. Simone, are you there? Yes, I am. Where did you sleep, Simone? Uh, my husband and I slept on a mattress in the back of a horse truck with three horses. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, Indeed. That's a beautiful story. Beautifully nestled. Uh, yes. and how do you not get stomped on in a situation well, like that? Well, there was a lot of room, but after eight hours, it was rather smelly and wet. Horses relieved themselves quite a few times during eight hours. Yeah, yeah, that tends to interrupt this flow of sleep, I find. <laughs> kind of sexually yes. intimidating as well. Uh, exactly. Sexually intimidating, says Richard Marslin. <laughs> Okay. Oh, Samo, do you do it every year for your honeymoon now? Just... Oh, we try to make it an annual event. Yeah, yeah. That's, a lovely, yeah. that's lovely. Pack your umbrella and off your sheet. Wake up with horse flu. All, all right. right. Very nice. Thanks, everyone. Unfortunately, all of the other callers, it simply says, with Ed Cavalier. Oh, so, no, it doesn't. I won't be putting those no, through here. No, it doesn't. Don't send those through, Sess. And a horse float as well. Lockie Hume is sitting in today, and we've all just spotted Ray Martin. In He's the in next the next studio. studio. Yeah, yeah. Did you hear what Ed said? He looks so Ray Martin. He does. He really does. He does. And <coughs> but it doesn't look like a wig. It's real. It doesn't hits. look like a wig from behind. Like, you know, Donald Trump, you see it from behind, and yeah. it's like this big combed forward. <laughs> what is that? monstrosity? Is that what it is? Because yeah, I it's cannot not a, It's work not a comb out. over. It's a fold over. A fold So over. it's 
almost like he's grown it down, like if you combed all his hair, it's all bald on top, but he's yeah. grown it right from the back, and if you combed it all over his face, it'd go down to his nipples. Oh. And then he folds it back and <laughs> sprays it into place. But I've seen it up close. It was a theory that Matthew George, the director and I had, and we used yeah. to draw diagrams. Of how it was achieved. Yeah, of how it was achieved. And then I was in New York a few months ago, and I was, was at this party that Trump was throwing, and yes. there it was. Hang on, you actually saw... Donald Trump, a close. First a clanger. There's one of the hour. Take that, Gussie. But it does look like, yes, we can confirm yes. it's his real hair. It's Ray Martin's Ray real Martin. hair. Right next to it. Now, Lockie, you've been in Hollywood listening Travis Bickle style to our podcast. Yeah. What have you learnt? Well, okay, here are some of the spooky... Oh, oh no, Rich. Rich. You know, you had button. two years yeah. to get that, right? The button was stuck. Two years. The button was can, stuck. Can we get him another fifth of vodka before we start the show? <laughs> another <going> already? <laughs> uh, okay. okay, what have you So I sort of I, I assembled them into sort of just weird mm -hmm. and sort of archaic. All the stuff that get this is famous Still, for. Sure. Here's number one. Yes. The Kim Beasley thing. Yes. Okay, which is actually the theme from the Taking, the, Taking a Pillow 1, 2, yeah. 3, yep, yep. is composed by my favourite cinematic composer, David Shire. Oh, well, I mean, I'm sure we were aware of that when we did it. There it is. And they're remaking this film again. And I'm I know. hoping that they're uh, keeping this. Yeah, but it's, you know it's going to suck because you got. I like Denzel Washington, <laughs> but guess who's playing the Robert Shaw villain character? Oh, not Paul Richard. Shaw. John Travolta. Oh, oh really? Isn't he in it's drag just, these days? He's just going to be as a woman again. Mm. Okay, that's, All right, that's, that's number one. one. Here's number two. Oh. <laughs> Angus Gussie Sampson uh -huh. eats at a bakery cafe over in Richmond that is run by the real Peter Delisandro, the character that I played in Let's Get oh, Skates. Let's oh. get that around. That's, that's got to be worth wow. something. Oh, we just going to have that every time, are we? Right. If you guys rehearse okay. this, can I ask? Uh, yeah. Okay, what's going on? Does it, is it that seamless that, it, that you need to ask? Okay, here we go. Number three. Yes. A regular guest of yours, Brian Nankervis. Yes, we love mm. Brian. Brian was my grade three primary school teacher. Is that right? That's worth one. That's earth, that one. Yep. Now, hang on. What was he like? He was great. It was did awesome. He, he, in fact, Brian directed the first play I ever did. Wow. When I was seven years old. Was and it wasn't a little show? panto thing. No, it was a real esoteric Oh, not Angels show. in America. No, it could have been. <laughs> it could have been. And, and he, he required of the cast to write their first line of dialogue each for the thing. Nice. Right, right. And so it had to be done in the sense of pick a word and then say something that relates to that word. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, go, Ed. Oh, uh, a bear. Oh, a oh, uh, bear, food. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, Shakespeare. All right. Wow. Okay, and so I was piss farting around swapping footy cards through yeah, all the rehearsals. Yeah, yeah. So I never actually did any of the hard yards. Finally came up there and he went, Lachlan Hume, are you ever going to do any work for this play? Wow. And I turned around him and I went, Remote, where has everybody gone? Oh, very nice. That's, that's the first line of dialogue. Very nice. That's, that's not him. bad for a seven-year-old. I have to say, that is similar to something that goes on here that we've got into trouble for talking about. But what are they Give it a go. Do? Uh, fine storm. Have you seen a fine storm yet? I've heard one. That's when they say, like, a, I say, Tone, I throw you a word, okay? Well, no, you have a basketball, yeah. I think. You go oh, down what? to the boardroom. Oh, yeah, they give you a basketball. The energy captain gives you a basketball, and it's about radio. So I go, like, I'm holding the ball. I throw it to Tony and say, uh, 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 music. Uh, you too. And then I throw it to Richard, and he says, Excitement. And then he throws it back to Ed, who says, uh, uh, Food. And then throw it to Lockie. <laughs> and I go, I don't know what to do with this ball. Uh, throw it back to Tony. Tony. And I'll say, Toto. <laughs> and that's it. We've got a strategy. That's yeah. Fine Storm, yeah. apparently. White okay. guys can play basketball. And, that ex and it's that kind of excellent performance out of the marketing department that's resulted in this show <laughs> okay. getting axed. All right. Come on. We don't Not want any trouble. What's now, number four? Now, here we go. Number four. Yeah, ready? Mingo. Oh. Musical bingo. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh -huh. Aha. Yeah. What? Wait, don't start the music okay. yet. Hang on. I can maybe cue up the okay. Mingo theme. Yeah, okay, Mingo, let's hear Mingo. Yes. Because Marslin reckons he invented Mingo. Well, well he I, might have. I don't believe that I invented it. But you it. didn't invent the word. What's because the I invented the word Mingo <laughs> when I was nine years old as a fake swear word. Oh. So I could say to somebody, spooky. So I yeah. could say to somebody, oh, Tony, you big Mingo. You big Mingo. And then you can't get in trouble. If you couldn't be bothered saying it, you could just play the song. Yeah, we could. You've got to do it. You've, you've, you've actually got it. You've actually no, got to Richard, do it you live, have to do Rich. It. Don't just leave the keyboard leave alone. It, Rich, come on, it's not in there, Rich. You've got to do it. Okay, I'll do it live. Come right. in the grand day. What the hell? It's Triple M's Mingo. All you have to do is play a little game we have. It's called Mingo. Oh, stop all that swearing. Get rid of that. <laughs> Who are you calling a Mingo? We don't need that. Okay, that's an amazing. But what for a five? Uh, okay, here oh. is my number one connection mm -hmm. to get yeah, this. Yes. Now this better be good. Okay, Greg Fleet. 
your most infamous, most adored, most scurrilous yeah. member mm. of the Get yes. This yes. ancillary team. Of course, Flaherty often talks about his legendary run-in with Delivery Man 1. The man who played Delivery Man Man 1 in episode 517 of Prisoner who told uh, Greg, who was playing Delivery Man number 2, that he was upstaging him. Absolutely. Well, I did a bit of research. (laughs) Yes. In 1992, I wrote and produced a show that I was also in. Yes, okay, of course. (laughs) And it starred the real Delivery Delivery Man Man 1. That's pretty good. Spooky. And what, can you say anything? Well, I can, I can. I'm not going to say his name on air. Wouldn't make any difference anyway. Not, he hasn't really moved on much beyond Delivery Man One. <laughs> right. To give you an example about, and this, I hope, I hope you're listening, Fleety, because I know he, he tried to give you one right up the bracket, but <laughs> he really is not a good actor. And we can all <laughs> play this game at home right now. Everyone listening, yeah, 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 yeah. This is what you need to do. I want everybody at home to pretend you've got a salad sandwich okay. in your hand. I'm holding okay. an invisible salad okay. sandwich. I've got a real now, one. Now I want you to mime eating that salad sandwich yeah. really bad. Really like, sort of really hammy? over the top mime. Much like that right? in the KFC act. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you do that. <laughs> 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 right? Eating badly. And then imagine this actor actually was doing that but had a real sandwich a real in his sandwich hand. sandwich I said, oh, that's very poor. <laughs> so that's my top five spooky <laughs> connections oh, wow. together. That, well, that is wow. very impressive. Amazing. Very impressive, Lockie. And we'd like you to stick around now for what have you seen this could be a movie. It can be a clip on YouTube. Mm. It can be a maniac in the street. Mm-hmm. Let's just start with that department. What have you seen, Mr. Marslin? Just the other day, someone right around the corner from the station, as a matter of fact. Yes. And I've seen this a few mornings in a row, walking up and down the footpath backwards. Backwards? Is Whoa! It? Surely this is some kind of station promotion. This I don't be... know what it is, uh. but it's really... I, I can't bring myself to ask this person mm. why you're doing it. It seems like maybe it might be a chiropractic issue. Yeah. Like someone said, walk backwards and... Uh, really? You know, someone or some, uh, someone... trying to reverse time, like when you back a car right. out of the block to make the numbers go back yeah. on the... Uh... I've never seen that before. No. But it's every morning, walking backwards up and down the street. Mm. Maybe someone's filming her and she's... And they're running oh, the tape it's forwards. A woman. And it's a woman, is it? Yeah, uh, now we're getting somewhere. Yeah. But, okay. But she's also, and she's an Asian woman, so I'm wondering whether or not it's an Eastern medicine thing, whether or not, yeah. or is it a religious thing? I'm not sure. Maybe someone can clear that up for me. No one on this side of the panel has a clue what you're talking about. Yeah. Walking up and down backwards. What do you mean up, like the whole street, just in the yeah. alleyway out the back? And where were you while you were observing this? Yeah. I was just walking Reaching to work. for his wallet. <laughs> Okay. All right, that's yeah. somebody you've seen. I don't seen. know. It was really weird. Let's get back into the world of popular entertainment. Lockie, you've been overseas. Surely you've seen some movies that aren't out here yet. I have, and I'll tell you what I've seen. The Coen Brothers' new film, No Country for Old Men. Oh, oh, no country. Ooh. Pretty scary, Lockie. It's terrifying. Ooh, it's spooky stuff. Not as spooky as my top five connections to get this. No, of course not. Nothing stuff. is. And I've got to tell you, I'm not going to give away anything about the movie. Yeah. Um, it's the most intense mm. experience I've ever had in the cinema. Mm. And here are my predictions thus far. I, I won't make, I'll make one prediction for the mm, film. Mm. Javier Bardem, who yeah. plays Anton Shiga, yeah. the assassin yes. in the movie, he will win Best Supporting Actor at next year's Academy I Awards. Can't. Normally we would bag that up and play it next year, but that's mm. not going to be an option Which for is us. why I'm going to make 77 more predictions. <laughs> okay, I'm going, to go, I'm going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say that Zac Efron <laughs> is going to win Best Actress for Hairspray. Uh, hey! Are you serious? Yeah. You would attack it, Zac Efron... Best can't, actress. Yeah, I can't. Oh, mm. is there a girlier boy oh, in the world than Zach? And you know what he looks Efron. like? He, he's got that kind of face. Where I think the kid's only like eighteen years old, but it already looks like he's had like four facelifts. Is that a lot you know of that horrible yeah, yeah. look? Oh, sometimes they do now. I'm told they started what? in the early twenties. Yeah. Kids having facelifts. Yeah, they get Botox and all that kind of stuff done. Yeah, man. Yeah. Well, Crystal was a young, wasn't she? On Big Brother. Here we go. See, it doesn't take long. It really doesn't. Was she walking backwards up the street too? <laughs> was she? Hey, you following along? She's not backwards on the front of Zoom magazine, that's for sure. Is this her on hey. the cover of Zoom? Yes. I don't even 3D know glasses supplied. Yeah, addy, 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 addy. Oh, you're thinking that's surgery, are you? Mm. And you're yeah, damn that's, well that's right. Okay, <laughs> let's cross the cover of Zoo off the What Have You Seen list. Tony Martin? Well, I saw Newstopia last Wednesday. Great show. And that'll be on tomorrow night. Yeah. yeah on SBS, cool. Richard Marsden can Contributes to that program. And I saw Sean McAuliffe, who's going to be coming on our show on Friday. Right. That's right. Sizzle. Because technically, he won't be an employee <laughs> of a rival network after 10 o'clock ah, this Friday. Ah, so he's okay. available to come on our final show. Great, great, great. I was watching, and he did an impression that he's been doing for years, uh, you know, in real life to make mm. people laugh. I've never seen him do it publicly before. Cesar Romero is the Joker yeah. on the TV Batman. It's a hard one to do. 
because not only have you got to white face up, mm. you've got to grow a real moustache mm. and then paint over the white That's face. Right. But Sean yeah. doesn't always do it with the white face, does he? He just does it with the moustache. Yeah, isn't it? well, it's Movember, so he's, he's, ah. he's getting into it. But I remember that when you were up for the role of the Joker in the movie, mm. I don't know if you remember this call, it was very late at night, we said, if you got that role, wouldn't it be good if we could get you into the Joker gear, yeah. get McAuliffe into the Cesar Romero Joker oh, gear, yeah. and we were going to make a short film where the old Joker is being replaced by the new Joker. I don't remember that conversation ever going that far. The remember. old Joker gets thrown out of the gang and has to turn to petty street crime and, <laughs> and ends up on Cops, <laughs> where his, you know, Not wacky police, soda siphon stick. Yeah, police 10-7. Police 10-7 while you are getting all his old gigs. It was a, like, one of those great late night time. But it would have been great if you'd got that part, although completely illegal mm. copyright-wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, it just uh, would have been great if I got that part. No, nah, well, let's, let's not talk about that. Newstopia, that goes out on SBS 10 o'clock on Wednesdays. Finally, Ed Cavalier, what have you seen? Uh, I, I've seen that we're running fiercely late. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get to the callers. Today, Xander. I was working at a concert not long ago, and um, security were trying to clear everyone out at the end of the concert, and this yeah. guy just wants some water from the bar or something. And so anyway, security was clearing him out, saying, no, he can't have any water, and he started screaming about having his human rights violated. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's good. Assault! Assault! <laughs> yeah, it belonged on Police 10-7, it really did. And what was the concert? Uh, I believe it was Bad Religion. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fine, yeah. fine punk band. Yeah. Yes. So that wasn't violating his basic and human rights. Actually, to tie in um, with your last phone in topic, I did fall asleep at that concert. There you oh, are. Fantastic. A glowing review. What have you seen and where did you sleep? A twofer. Thank you, Xander. Uh, as always, who's next? G'day, Craig. I've seen Richard Wilkins mm. fall ass over into a polystyrene box of fruit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the best answer we've ever had on this segment. What were and, the circumstances? <laughs> he was walking backwards on his mobile phone and uh, tripped into said box of fruit. Mm. But uh, the box of fruit was empty, and when he stood up, still attached to his butt. Oh. And Rich, Richard, I thought you said the person walking backwards was a small Asian woman. Yeah. You didn't say it was oh, Richard and, Wilkins. You're not and, covering up for him, are you? And on that, Richard, yes. in Asian cultures, apparently walking backwards will prevent cancer. But apparently they believe that. If you walk around Beijing yeah. and walk in a park, there's as many people walking backwards as there is forwards. Really? Wow. You nearly guessed it. Bunches of you them. Guessed it. So, so Richard, Richard Wilkins is fine. That's right. <laughs> Making a fool of himself, but... He Being healthier in the process. All right, uh, thank you, Craig. Wow. Very informative. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, time cop Richard Marsden, do we have time for one more, one one more caller? Yes. Hi, Marie. How are you? Yeah, really great, thanks. Good to hear. What have Long you seen? Long time, first time, guys. Oh, oh good on you. Very much. What have you seen? Probably time frame being you'll be the last one too, Yes, right? first well, time, last time caller. <laughs> 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 what have you seen, Marie? Uh, in Geelong, I was t- taking my daughter home from rowing, and um, a guy was taking his dog and his wheelbarrow for a run. Oh, that's nice. Oh. Yeah, because wheelbarrows get very antsy if they're left alone all day in the yard. <laughs> they're impossible to call in at night. <laughs> the dog wasn't even in the wheelbarrow. No. They were all running together. They were jogging. It was just hilarious. She gave him a, good, a bit of a toot and a wave. It was really And uh, can I ask, Marie, are you a Geelong local? Yeah. Are they still celebrating that win down there? Oh, of course. People Still blue and white flying everywhere. Do you often see people getting around in the sunscreen moustache in tribute to the Norm <laughs> Smith winner this year? <laughs> no, not many. Unfortunately, we don't see Louie in his coat too much either. Oh, well, Fair that's enough. sad to hear. <laughs> Thanks, Thank Marie. You, Marie. Thanks, everybody. Oh. Lockie Hume, thank you for sitting in for the whole hour, and thank, thank you. you for being such a big part of our Thanks, show. Up thank you for all your support over two years, guys. This is truly one of the greatest experiences I've ever had, and I know you were going to be desperately missed by millions of people, not only in, the, in Australia, but around the world, because you've got a huge listenership. All on the you. podcast, Thanks. including Thank you. yourself. Thanks, and I just feel terrible, because I feel like we should have got you a gig somewhere. We should have got you a yeah. part over uh, the two years. Yeah, I was... Apparently there's an audition for Mingo coming up. <laughs> oh, that would be good. Mingo. <laughs> Mingo the movie. Sitting over there... Yes, it's Ed Cavalier. Ed Cavalier. You must have seen his sterling work for KFC. Ed Cavalier. His rivalry with Galen from Big Brother is quite legendary. Ed Cavalier, he'll dazzle thee. We've heard about his preparation, haven't we? He looks like he's ready to go. He's got Zoomag. Something he's dragged off of YouTube. A sandwich. Jokes that is cribbed from his MySpace. Now, here's Ed. <laughs>
How's that? Still going, mate. Oh, Ed Cavalli. I thought Ed Cavalli. But one verse of this was quite enough, you'd have to agree. I thought Ed Cavalli. Oh, he's defamatory. Oh, sorry, I'm running out of words that rhyme with Cavalli. Oh, this cavalry, obviously balladry. Yeah, he's known for that. It looks a lot like Lang KD. Bang, now we're out of the woods. Yes, it's Ed time. Or lentil soup and bread time. And that's the end of the song. And we'll see you at the same time tomorrow. <laughs> Fantastic work. Actually, I'm uh, going Cavalry style. By the way, that was uh, replayed for someone calling himself Meat Plums. <laughs> Hello, Meat Plums. You know who he should marry? Uma Thurman. Think about it, it might work. <laughs> Work it out amongst yourselves. This is, uh, oh, okay, he's talking about editing, so I'm doing a bit of this today myself. Look I've got at you, Tone. I don't have time to have meals. I've got so many old shows to listen to. Oh, I know, Tone. Trying to find, when was that one where Ed talked about the bloke with his testicles caught in a deck job? It's three, three hours looking for that. Yeah, I've just got the Umi Plum stroke now, too. Goes about, well done, <laughs> it's a time bomb. Goes about <laughs> probably 15 seconds. Well worth the hunt. <laughs> worth the time. It's going to be a big final show. Mm. The musical montage of all the songs we've done is currently running 12.34. When you say the songs we've done, is that the stuff that we've actually sung That's ourselves? That's just the things that we've sung. Ugh. And I've got to put that yellow belly black snake midnight oil business in there. If you're listening, Matty D, happening. add that to the title. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. It's getting out of control. Shorter than so that what Foo is... Fighters song. Ooh, that... he's had a crack at the Foo Fighters. Is he just? Well, it's still shorter than The Pretender, isn't it? Oh, oh he's having another. Shock, he's having two cracks at the Fooies. Obviously, he already got the stolen stationery in the boot. Now he's letting <laughs> loose. <laughs> Fantastic. What about our listeners on the other side of the world in England? This bloke here, what's his name? Mark Butler of Surbiton in Surrey. Oh, yeah. okay. He listens uh, at about three in the morning on the internet. He says, uh, well, here are three of the ways that get this has affected my life. Every time I hear an unexpected bang or crash, I will have to say to myself, all my plums. Fair enough. Uh, he keeps wondering who in Britain might be as big a bullshitter as Rex Hunt. Oh, hang and on. Hey, hey, hey. I'll never attempt to eat while I'm on the telephone again, as Ed Cavalli constantly proves you can't get away with it. That's a good point. Oh, really? What's his name? <laughs> it's What's Mark his name? Butler. Dude, I've had a face full of tuna. <laughs> For this whole break and no one's noticed, hey? Yeah, I'll give you me. Mark Butler. <laughs> what about Dave Higgins? He woke up in Moorabbin lockup this <laughs> week after the police had a report of a dead body out the front of Monash Uni. This is in Victoria, Clayton. Really? Uh, Dave was the dead body. Uh, so that... <laughs> he's still sleeping that off. Who have you heard from there? Uh, Harry Dickenballs has written in. Oh, yeah, hello, Harry. Uh, for, the, great. for the first date with me now, new missus. I took the DVD of Short Bus over to hers. Oh, Seven dear. months oh, later, no. she still shakes her head when it gets a mention on Get This. <laughs> and oh yes, it worked like a dream. All the way to the bank. Okay. Making a difference. Sorry, that wasn't long enough for me to take a mouthful. This is harder than it looks, listeners. The trick is, Tone, as soon as the other person starts talking, <laughs> and then right. you'll notice if you listen back to the tapes of this show, most of the things I say are, mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm, huh? <laughs> oh, Tone. What about uh, Food Stuff Corner? All right, Gak Eisenberg says uh, he's sick of me talking about Korma Chameleon. Uh, he would prefer we canvas his favourite one, which is when he's at a restaurant and there's a bit of stir fry. Uh, it's impossible to talk about bok choy without singing bop curl. I don't know if I could pull that off. <laughs> I don't get that. No. Well, so what we've got, we've got Papa Dum Preach. Yeah. We've got Korma, Korma, Korma Chameleon. Yeah. And she's a bok choy, she's a bok bok choy. Yeah, and what's the other one I always say? Oh, Tzatziki Monkey. <laughs> tzatziki Monkey. Just on the side. Tzatziki Monkey. How does Richard live his life? Yeah, good question. Neil Rosenfels emailed in and said Richard is of no fixed address. Mm. He moves from toilet block to toilet block, waving the flag for common decency. <laughs> I hope that's going to be sorted out on Friday's show. <laughs> Make sure you check out petitionspot.com. What's yeah. happening, Rich? So many wonderful signatures up there. Mm. And we're trying to get to 10,000 by yeah. 4 p.m. 23rd. It's Richard's dream. Make it come true, people. We're getting up there. Okay. Yeah. Everyone's real that signs up there, though, so maybe you can go up there and put some fake names. Real people like uh, People Want Ducks, Anti Scallop, <laughs> Japes the Ted Bloon, The Gopher. Where will I get my Caddyshack references now? <laughs> he writes. And Jenny Talia, um, yeah. found out about you guys in the second week. But it's the best accident I've had other than when I met Katie Lang uh, and what? asked her if she had a twin sister, open parentheses, Ed, close parentheses. Oh, yeah. good okay. to hear. That's yeah. for the future. Miss Talia. 
Cecilia on the phones is on the mic today. Hello. Hello, hello Sis. Going? Hello, Tone. Hello, Ed. Sis, how you going? I can... Yeah. Hello, Sis, Rich. Ramrod, how you doing? Good yeah. to see you. Um, it's, it's fine to be, you know, on this side of the glass. I don't have to make faces at uh, Richard in, you know, ticks of approval when he plays John Howard laughing at things. And what? Are we that? often uh, spot people from sales coming around to have a word to you while we're mm. on here? Is that in direct response to something we've said usually? Often not, no. They're often right. just avoiding having to do their job, oh, I think. Yeah. And I know there's a few other people that do that as well. It might be my scintillating company. Okay. Yeah. Could now, be. But you're generally occupied dealing with the filth on the phones. Oh. How are the callers treating you this year? <laughs> the callers have been very nice. There's mm-hmm. lots of uh, regular ones, of course. There's Xander, who asked yeah, me out. And I did get to meet him at the rally. He asked you out, He did, did yeah. Oh, uh, okay. And, uh, Dan's not impressed by that, although I've seen him Xander. pull the same move so many times. No, you haven't, Tony. <laughs> Sandy, you creep. Uh, oh, hang on. That's a bit rough. Also, uh, a, a number of celebrities have taken a shine to you as well just before they come in to do the uh, hour of guest hosting. Well, I was going to say one of my favourite people that spent some time in the airlock, as we call it, was your mum, Rich. Oh, okay. She didn't hit on you, though, did she? Uh, no, she didn't hit on me. No, no. And Rob Carlton did show his breast to you guys, yeah, and, and he awesome. took over the phones for a little while, which was very nice of him to, you know, he's help stacked, him out. He's stacked, isn't he? Isn't he, Rob Carlton? He's stacked to the rafters. <laughs> he's got a boob dent mm. he doesn't like to talk about. Now, every Everyone who works on this show has to, at some point, do a sketch. I mean, that's kind of the rule, isn't it? Yeah. Uh-oh. It's a big ask. Have you managed to knock a sketch together, Cecilia? Well, I did. Yes. Yes, I got my pot and pan. Right. I'm not nearly as and good who, as Matthew Dower. Who, but... We haven't heard this. Who helped you with it? Uh, was uh, Ed involved? No. I oh, wasn't it? No. Uh, Sex in the City helped me, and uh, oh. Richard Marslin helped oh, me. He but volunteered, did he? Yeah, he did. He, he, but I actually know. Yeah. I wanted to set it up like, you know, I'm on the yes. phones and I hear stuff. People ring me up and they tell me what's going on around the place. Yep. And I heard about this meeting that was going to go on with Richard Marslin and one Mr. Matthew McConaughey. Ooh. Wow, Matthew McConaughey, hey? This is an honour. I'm a big fan, and look, I was really well surprised when your people said you wanted to see me about a project. Of uh, here's what I've been thinking about. How do we get your column to translate to the silver screen? Oh, my column. The column I used to write for the Sunday Mail in South Australia. Yes. Mm, Sorry, Matthew, to waste your time, but that was actually cancelled last year. I think I've got the answer. The answer? Well, look, Matthew, I get this might be finishing up, but... I don't know about going back to the column writing. I mean, there is Newstopia, and I managed to get a few jokes on that this week. I think your writing is brilliant. Thanks. I really do. I mean, it's sharp, it's edgy, it's brutal at times. Okay. I do like it. I really do. Thank you, Matthew McConaughey. (laughs) Mr. McConaughey, Matthew, (laughs) this is is really flattering, but you want to develop my column, which... I don't write anymore. Into a film? Who'd star in it? Ed Cavalier? <laughs> I mean, look at him. I mean, he is such a great guy. I'll tell him you said that. Uh, so what exactly do you see the plot of the film being? What if we flush out a central relationship? Ed and Tony's relationship? Or back in the days of Adelaide, me and Ann Wills? <laughs> it's, it's very New York. Adelaide? Well, it's got quite the nightlife, <laughs> but, uh, well, I wouldn't say Rundle Mall was any Broadway. There's the Ville Gardens, of course. That's a bit fruity. It's always a little juicy. OK, OK, OK. Well, let, let me get this straight. You, Matthew McConaughey, want to produce a film of my Adelaide column... Excellent. ...about and starring Ed and Tony. You know? Sounds like it could be a bit with Nail and I. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, my only question, really, is what the f*** is Gary's problem? Uh, Gary? I'm Richard. Kidding. I'm acting. Matthew, are you feeling okay? <laughs> That's what I do. Oh, I know. <laughs> yes, but do you see what I mean? That's why I want to develop the story with you. No, no like I said, uh, big fan. Especially liked your work in Dazed and Confused. Man, woman, walking the earth. Uh, well, how about this? I'll think about your idea <laughs> and I'll let Ed and Tony know you're interested. I don't understand why we can't be together. I really want to f*** you, baby. Thanks, thanks, Matthew. I've uh, got to go now. I think my agent wants to... Uh, Talk to me about an offer of a series. And I've got some striped Freddy Krueger jumpers to wash and some lotion to purchase and some cameras to strap onto my shoe and what have you. Take care. <laughs> Beautiful work, wow. Thank you. Thanks. You've managed to capture the true voice of Richard Marsland yes, and, of course, yes. his rather odd relationship with Matthew McConaughey, <laughs> who, to me, in those clips, sounds like he might be one of our weekend listeners. I think he might be. <laughs> OK. How does this set up says. our callers, though? Here's what we're doing today. What do you want to know? What do you want to know? Yeah, what do you just want to know? Like, if you've had a brush uh, with Richard, mm-hmm. yeah. let's uh, let's hear about that. Maybe 
how Richard lives his life. Let's put that off the menu no. now because no. that's going to be... Lotion. It's all about lotion. Most exactly of Friday's right. show, according to the notes <laughs> I've <laughs> seen. Really? Cecilia, thank you again for thank your beautiful you for your contributions. Thank you. And, of course, thank you for putting together Get That, which is your little project. Yes, I get to do that every week as well. Of Get This. Tell the us the glamour time it goes out on. Six to eight on Sunday morning. Oh, oh what a treat. It's very nice. Everyone it. gets to hear my, you know, good work there and your fabulous introduction. Humour just for the baking community. <laughs> <laughs> and now, listeners. Hi, Justin. How are you? Uh, aside from Ed Heavily, what's the favourite toy in the bedroom? Oh, ah, favourite toy in the bedroom, Ed. Bendy's beads for me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. There's a uh, there's a local comedian where I live, Justin, who uh, has just brought out a uh, like a, a collection of work. Yeah. And on one of these collections of work, he's decided to sort of brown face up, as if you will, minstrel style. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I've got one of the standees of that, Justin, and I've stuck it to the ceiling above my bed. <laughs> I wondered where that went. That was and in the office. The thing is, he's not joking. No, no he's not. Absolutely and right. Personally, <laughs> I prefer mousetrap. It takes a long time to set yeah. up, but what a payoff. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Justin. Thanks, Do you Justin? get a lot of people calling up about sex toys? Uh, we did have a spate of that. A spate. Uh, <laughs> I think a it was um, something to do with the topic. Who else has got a spate, Ed? <laughs> Hi, Josh. How are you? Cavalry, mate, this is directed right at you. Yeah, come yeah. on, son. Can you warn us about the contents of short bus? Oh, Josh. <laughs> Josh, have you seen it? My wife will never forgive me for oh. getting that one out. Listen, <laughs> listen to me, Josh. I listen thought to... we did warn people about no, it. No, no, no. I, I thought that was the point, too. I strongly recommend it. I still do. Mm. Josh, <laughs> you loved every second, bro. Don't even pretend you didn't. No, mate. No, 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 no. He spent a lot of time on the fast forward. Oh, oh. man. And the rewind and the pause. Maybe uh, in fast forward. Okay. Oh, well, we're, man. Di- we're divided on the short bus issue in here. Josh, um, how's your yoga? <laughs> oh, mate. I'm not that limber. Yes. <laughs> get to work on those flexibility skills and get back to us. Nice to talk uh, to you. You better get back hey, to us. I just want to say that uh, mm. it's going to be a bit of a radio wasteland when you guys go, mate. Oh, I appreciate Dad, that, Josh. You go. Thank oh, you very much. Well, Josh. we've been working towards a radio wasteland for years on this show. Absolutely. Absolutely right. Hospital Radio, look out for us. Thank you, Josh. Thanks for your support. Who's next? Hi, Adrian. G'day, fellas. How you going? Excellent. It's well, going to be a shame to hear you blokes off here. Dead set, mate. Oh, Very good. Come round to your place. Do it live. Mate, we will. you're more than welcome. All right, sweet. Barbies <laughs> and everything, mate. If That's you want it. topless women, I can organise that. Ooh. Too. <laughs> Nikki. Where have you been all my life? No, uh, no, tell, my me, tell me. <laughs> yeah, but this one's for Richard. Yep. Hey, yeah. Yes. Mate, that's it. You just, I think you've got a brother called Earl. Oh. You just sort of remind me of Earl. You know, my name is Earl. Oh, on the TV show. Yeah, yeah. Jason Lee. I was trying just to work the out. the way you carry on. Yeah, listen to you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Adrian, did you want us to send you a photo of Richard? Yeah, I'd love make it, sure? mate. Please, guys, could I just get a picture of you guys with the signatures, mate? Please. Yeah, you can do. <laughs> yeah, yeah we'll send you our credit card. Uh, oh, no, no, that's all I want. No, but I'm trying to pinch the hold and blimp and get saved. Get this on it, you know? Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> oh, mate, if I could. I thought that might be a question. How do we find the hold and blimp yeah. to put, get this Don't on? worry, I'm a Ford man. I know how to find hold and blimp. Yeah, you, 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 oh, we'll probably leave it at that, I reckon, Adrian. Yeah, just make sure I don't and take the Zippo forward with me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want any Zeppelin disasters no, in our no, final no, week. No, thank no you. No, no, thank you, Adrian. No time for that. Love you. Good one, Adrian. Love you to talk to you. Get this at the new time of 2 o'clock. Or in Adelaide, 3 o'clock. On the Triple M Network.